prices fall 10% overnight because there's a bunch of manipulation in the futures market. Oh, by the way, oldest trick in the book, right? Oldest trick in the book. If you want to buy a lot of something, what do you do? Do you go out and start buying it? Hell to the no. You sell some, you tell everyone how much it sucks, you short it, you push the price down so you can buy more at a lower price. It's the oldest trick on Wall Street. I mean, I tell a story all the time. Dwight Anderson, he went to Julian and said, hey, Julian, we should buy a bunch of copper. Here's all my analysis, all stuff. And Julian's like, yeah, that's, that's great. He says, all right, how much should I buy? He's like, no, I want you to sell 50 million. And then I want you to tell the New York Times that we're selling. And I want you to tell everybody at Morgan Stanley how much it sucks. Then we'll buy after the price goes down. Mark Yusko, founder, CIO, and managing director of Morgan Creek Capital, has likened the decline in Bitcoin prices to a Wall Street BlackRock crash, attributing it to the interest of the giant asset manager in the cryptocurrency industry. According to Yusko, price suppression is a favorite tactic of Wall Street, as they thoroughly assess a market before entering it and lower prices to make the asset less attractive to other buyers. Yusko suggests that BlackRock has been strategically influencing Bitcoin prices since last year, well before the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs in January. Discussions about price manipulation by BlackRock and Fidelity have circulated since last year, with critics often citing the activities of large financial institutions like JP Morgan as examples of how they disrupt industries to further their own interests. Critics have also noted coincidences between the SEC's actions against the cryptocurrency industry and sudden price drops. The latest target in the SEC's scrutiny is Ethereum and the Ethereum Foundation, as reports indicate that the SEC is gathering information to potentially classify the leading altcoin as a security. Are these activities interconnected, or are they simply a reflection of crypto market volatility? Clips from Yusko's interview shed light on his arguments regarding what he terms as BlackRock's crash, offering insights into the dynamics at play in the cryptocurrency market. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our crypto cheat guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now on the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. So this, this it doesn't happen every day, but if you watch um, in the evenings or, or mid-afternoon, you get these, these ramps down, and that's people pushing the futures down. Here's the scariest part. You know, there's a great chart that shows most of the gains in the stock market. Right? Stock market's gone up a lot over the last five years. Most of the gains don't happen when the market's open from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. The vast majority, and it's not quite 100%, but it's pretty close, happen overnight. All, this is crazy, all of the gains in the Bitcoin ETFs happen overnight, 100%. None of it's happening during the day because what's wow. happening is right before, right before close, the big dogs are selling naked in the futures market. They're pushing the price down. ETFs have to buy. They can only trade the last minute of the day. Literally, right? ETFs set a price the last minute of the day. Then they have to go get the Bitcoin overnight um, or, or settle it the next morning. So they're pushing the price down. They're marking the price at the, the close. And then it opens higher and they capture all that gain for themselves. And this, again, this is not new and it's not unique to the Bitcoin ETFs. Watch most big stocks. They kind of go back and forth and back and forth during the day. And then they gap open the next day or they gap down. It, all of the, and that's just futures create uh, irrational, not irrational. They, they create manipulatable markets, right? If all there was was spot Bitcoin and you and I, right? If I wanted to sell you a Bitcoin, I actually had to have a Bitcoin, but that's not the case anymore. With futures, if I want to sell you a Bitcoin, all I have to do is write you a contract. And as long as I go get a Bitcoin before that contract settles, we're good. 
But if we cancel the contract before I have to go find a physical Bitcoin, and this is, so what's happening yesterday evening, two days ago, a couple of days ago, actually last Friday, you know, when, when Michael, and I won't say Michael's doing this, but he knows he's got to buy a bunch of Bitcoin because he just issued a bunch of debt to go buy Bitcoin. Would you rather buy at high prices or low prices? Low prices. I actually think it's BlackRock, right? They have to buy lots of Bitcoin. Do you, do you follow, um, what's it, C15 Capital? It's a, a thing on, on a guy on Twitter. I think it's a guy. Maybe it's a girl. Um, I think it's called C15. Anyway, I should, I should give the person credit. But they started tracking these 100 wallets that were kind of new right before the ETF launch. And there's this one, he calls him Mr. 100. And again, I don't know if it's a guy or a gal, but Mr. 100, who every day is buying, irregardless. And, and this morning he said he bought into the dip last night. Well, of course, my belief, that's somebody related to, it's probably not Larry himself, but somebody related to the BlackRock network. And if you knew that you had 10-ish billion of demand for your new Bitcoin ETF, you don't know where you're going to find that because there's not that much circulating supply ready to trade. So what would you do? Before the launch, because you knew when the launch was going to happen, they, they knew, you would go accumulate a bunch so you could sell it to yourself. And I think that's what's happening. Recent reports indicate that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is leveraging Ethereum's transition to proof-of-stake consensus in its final phase to potentially reclassify the leading altcoin as a security. Allegedly, the agency has issued subpoenas to three prominent crypto companies, seeking records related to the Ethereum Foundation. This investigation, as per a recent Fortune report, might grant the SEC regulatory jurisdiction to label Ethereum as a security, potentially facilitating the rejection of spot Ethereum ETF applications including those from BlackRock and other entities. Moreover, disclosures made by the Ethereum Foundation via GitHub suggest potential scrutiny by a state authority, stemming from the SEC's investigative pursuits and its stance on Ethereum ETF applications. Bloomberg ETF analysts, Eric Balchunis and James Cert, have revised their expectations regarding the approval of these applications by the May 23 deadline. According to recent updates, they have reduced the probability of approval to 25%, compared to their prior forecast of 90% approval for Bitcoin ETFs last year. Despite these developments, Yusko maintains that there remains a possibility of Ethereum ETF approvals in late 2024, post the US presidential elections. However, he expresses skepticism about the prospects of further cryptocurrency-based ETFs thereafter. The interview will now resume, exploring these unfolding dynamics in the cryptocurrency market. My immediate answer is no. Um, and why do I think that? is I don't think the regulators would have approved the Bitcoin ETF if it weren't for the courts, right? Forcing Gensler's hand. Now, the flip side of that is I do think the, the person who's making that decision is BlackRock, not really Gensler or anybody else. I, I actually believe that. And and look, I was wrong about this. I thought literally they were going to approve only BlackRock, right? I thought they were going to tell everybody else to, to pound sand and they were going to approve BlackRock and let them. So I, I think it's great that they approved all the others. And, you know, full disclosure, we own pieces, you know, because you and I invested with Jason in in a piece of two of the companies that that have, you know, part of the newborn nine. So that's exciting. There's There's no impetus for the SEC to go further uh, because they haven't been forced. Now, the flip side of that is if, if BlackRock says, this E thing looks big, I can make a lot of money, so I want that one. That one could happen. When you start getting down below that, I just don't know that the market caps are big enough for those other people to care. And that's, I think, how those decisions get made. If, if BlackRock decides they want it, then it will happen. Because uh, remember, Winklevoss twins created the idea for the ETF 11 years ago. 11 years ago. It's, my mind is blown. And they were said no. And then other people tried, you know, 21 shares and Bitwise and, you know, all these people tried. No, 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 no. Last June, BlackRock says, all right, we're in. Boom. 
six months later. I mean, it didn't even take that long. I mean, in regulatory, I mean, it's a long time in, in life, but not in regulatory time. It's possible the, the Ethereum ETF could get approved because it's big enough at 360 or 380 billion. I'm not sure what the market cap is now. Um, maybe it's 400, but that, that one's big enough. The other ones I just don't think are big enough to matter. Regardless of BlackRock's crash or any other factors, Bitcoin is currently demonstrating improved performance. According to data from CoinMarketCap, the leading cryptocurrency by market capitalization has witnessed a roughly 2% increase over the past 24 hours and a 6% rise over the past 5 days. Furthermore, as a new trading week commences, there is anticipation for the spot Bitcoin ETFs to set new records and potentially drive up prices for Bitcoin. What are your insights on Mark Yusko's interview? Do you share the perspective that this is merely a temporary setback induced by BlackRock's actions, with no lasting impact on prices? Feel free to share your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.